Right, so here we have our next subject on the screen, ready to go. Little Yorkshire Terrier puppy. I love the pose and I love all the colours in it. Very sweet. I think, uh, really enjoy doing this picture, I think. Um, so I thought I'd just go through with you what I do to initially start. I print a black and white copy on ordinary printer paper. That I'll use to trace the puppy onto the white pastel mat, which we're going to use for this project. Then I print another copy of the colour, coloured version, but, uh, of high quality, on printer paper. Then I do another copy on photographic paper. This is semi-matte. And as you can see, the colour is quite different. And there's just much, you know, there's much more detail in it. Much nicer. It's really worth using. If you're, going to, if you're not going to copy off the screen, which I tend not to, uh, I tend to like a picture there really that I can touch and I can easily point it out for you because I'm not very technically able yet to be able to do all that sort of fancy stuff on the screen. So as you can see, look at the difference in the colour. Um, I know this is backlit, but look, it's a totally different colour. It's rusty. And this is pinky red. In fact, if I put this right on the screen, I'll get a bit of, no, I won't get any light through it. But there, that's the difference. So it really matters experimenting a bit and finding, you know, getting your picture just the right colours that you like and want to draw. So anyway, I just thought I'd go that, through that with you and um, I'll now get on with getting the puppy onto the paper. Okay, off we go. So I've used these two products in today's picture, the trace down paper and the white pastel mat, Clairefontaine. Okay. Okay, so we're all ready to start putting the design or the animal onto the page. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to be referring to this the whole time as well, just to make sure I get all the details right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use something kind of bright here. Let's get this right there. That's it. That's my yoga mat that I stand on. Helps. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do is use something nice and bright. Um, <clears throat> So I'm going on all the black areas at this point to get the exact nice shape of his ear in. Now I'm pressing quite firmly. Uh, I'm using a pastel. I'm using a nice light yellow pastel. So I think it'll, it'll show up on these bits. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll just change. Right, that's, that's very pale. So I've put the pastel mat onto the board first, then the trace down paper, and the picture goes on top. Uh, but I don't think that's, it's not, it's not hard enough. I think what I'll do is, okay, well, I used a charcoal pencil last time. I usually use, if I, if I think it's going to show up, I just usually use an ordinary pencil. But of course it's no good for you because you won't be able to see the shiny bits. But when you use an ordinary pencil, it shines. You can see exactly where you've drawn. So I'm going to get my charcoal pencil out, I think. Okay, so we've got the charcoal pencils out now. We'll try this again. Um, now, because I'm trying to trace around white here, uh, and black and white does make it easier for, for getting all the lines in the right place. It just makes it simpler. But you, I won't see the white lines as well. So I'm going to be going on the outside of the white lines all over. Oh, 
Right, let's see how that Yeah, see it's better. It's a bit harder. So we'll just go we'll just go around this. Again. Yeah, normally I'd use the ordinary pencil for this because you'll get a nice line, a nice thin line, uh, which is important when you're doing detail. Very important. But this seemed to work well on the video, so I thought a pastel pencil would be okay, but yeah, look, you can see the difference. That's quite a difference, isn't it? So yeah, pastel pencil is much softer. Okay, well, we live and learn all the time, you see. So because this is white here, on all the white bits, what I normally do is go over them, as you've probably seen, but I won't be able to see them once they're on there. They're just disappearing, so I have to go on the black around the white bits. So we'll just do the, the basics here. Okay, so I'm just going to work through this because it's going to be kind of easy to get lost here because of the not being able to see what I'm doing properly. So we just have to busk it, as usual. That's what I do all the time. Now, Just going to get in. Yes, yeah, so I suppose if you wanted to, you could trace over the coloured print you've you've printed out. But um, as I say, if it's black and white, it just simplifies where the lines are. Really, that's what I usually do. But everything is, you know, we're all different, and every picture that you do is different. You have to maybe approach things in a different way. And, you, you know, we're, we're gaining experience all the time. Can't know everything. As an extremely wise woman told me once, you can't know everything. So, what I do with these little bits is I just kind of go over them a little bit just to, again, it's just such a big help. I'm going around this black bit here. It's just such a, a quick help for you if you know, okay, those hairs are only going to go out that far. And it saves you having to measure again and or guess it. There's a nice black bit there. I want to go around that. And of course, as you can see, I'm using the dark grey trace down paper so that I can see it on the white pastel mat. So because these lines are very thin but important, I'm just going over them. Mm. Just you know, the little slip, slithers. I'm just going over them on the out on the right side. I kind of make a rule. So that when I, if I have to compare on my tracing, um, I will be able to see, I can see this. You won't be able to see this, I'm afraid. But if you just watch what I'm doing, you'll, you'll kind of get the, the idea. As 
I say, there's no rush with this anyway. You know, it's not going to move. You've got everything taped down. And probably the first thing I would do is um, make sure that his nose is properly in place. When I take this paper off, just make sure that it, it looks really right. I usually do that with everything actually. As soon as I've taken off the, the trace down paper and looked at the picture that's on the pastel mat, I will just then refine it with my picture, which with my best picture. Just go over it, just draw bits in that are really important. lines here so because it's up right on the edge I am going to go on the white bit here obviously we don't want a line around the edge of his face here so it's got to be and there's a little bit of hair there which you can just mark in with a few lines and here again he's got a tuft of hair there but this that needs to be right on his face, not on the outside of it. All I'm doing now is going over the, I'm going over the black bits now so that they'll be black on the white paper. And this will give us a nice outline. disappeared on here because I've kind of, kind of coloured it in and that's black in there this is black here just make sure you've got all the edges in because so that makes it very easy then black bits in there. So just going for the basics here, we're not going for the, you know, all the hairs. See how it's looking. Yeah, it's coming out lovely. Look. So now, kind of moving across here, 
just doing the dark area. Put that in. And then we've got a very dark patch here, so I'm going over the over the black bit now. On the edge of the white, white bit here, going on the black patch. That's it. Put this black line in there. And then we've got a bit here that's darker. So the dark red. So we'll put that in. It's quite an important bit of marking that. A little patch there, a little patch there, patch there. Yeah, that's going up here. Okay. The reason I'm doing this on the pastel mat is that I really like the strong colours in this. And um, when you're using reds on white pastel mat, they do seem to come out really strong and nice. Whereas if they were um, any other colour, they may, they may get, you might just have a bit more work to do to get them really bright. So that's why I'm using the white for this puppy here. Yeah, I can't even see that what I'm doing here. So I'm going to put this main line in here. I think I've done that. Yeah, I've done that. I've done up to here. Okay, so I'm going to do the, the dark areas now. those in and fill them in so you know exactly where they are. So this yeah. obviously these won't have to be exact. They're just to help you help me to get the everything in the right place. You want to you could just draw it on if you want if you're if you prefer to do that way it's if you're quick and you can draw then fantastic um i i can draw but i'm pretty slow god you'd be all off like rockets if you tried watch me drawing yeah that is a slow process because I like to get everything exactly right. So I think when you're doing portraits, especially people, um, you know, it's got to be right. Everything's got to be dead on. And even, even when you trace it on, with a portrait, if a, if a line, a pencil line is out, that person is not going to look like that person. This is how good your drawing needs to be. Because um, I did, I, I did spend a year drawing and doing people portraits, drawing, you know, properly drawing. Because I just wanted to prove to myself that I could actually do it. You know, it, tracing is, is great, saves you an immense amount of time. But you do then wonder, if it, oh, I wonder if I could actually draw. Um, so that's what I did. I just did it really just to to prove to myself that I could that I could do it. Um, yeah, I can do it, but bloody slow. Really slow. And oh, I don't know. It it does give you a great sense of achievement. There's no doubt about that. I was very 
please that I'd made the effort to do that. And I will do it again because I really enjoy drawing, although it's very slow. As I probably said to you before, I like detail and um, I'm, I like to achieve things. I like to stretch myself and learn. I like, you know, I wanted to learn how to properly draw. And with everything I'd seen on YouTube and then trying it, um, I was able to do it. But really, who, who cares? Who cares whether you've traced it on or drawn it? Most people that don't draw, they don't know how hard it is. And they won't care that you, you, you know, how you've got it on the page. If they like your picture, they like your picture. They're not going to say, oh, did you draw that? I, I don't think I'd be interested in that picture unless you've actually drawn it. Not, they never say that to you. They won't. If they like your picture, they like it. That's the end of it. And, you know, why make it, why make it hard? I mean, we haven't all got the time, for one thing. Um, I haven't always had the time to spend a day drawing of something to get something on a page. Um, so, there is that as well, the time factor. And certainly, if you're trying to make a living at drawing, unless you're really quick, if you're doing pet portraits, just trace them on. You don't have to make life hard for yourself, do you? I'm just putting in these kind of darker areas, just with little specks, really. Just gives you little markers. See all these little bits here, the darker red. I'm just putting those in. I'll just help you. There's dark little streaks of black hair there. Such a pretty puppy, isn't it? Such a beautiful little thing. Gorgeous. Right, so I've done, I don't think I've done those bits. Yeah, no, I've got done nothing of that. So I'm just going on the right side of these lighter hairs just to and then any dark areas I'm going over there. some dark areas here so because they're dark I'm going to go right over them because they'll be nice and black underneath then. See it's important to have this here although you've got your your picture here that you're actually on it's important to make sure that your marks are in exactly the right place. I think for this bit, not, I don't think you're going to be able to see this. So 
I may go on to a pencil because it needs to be really accurate. But you just see a little bit there, can't you? Now I can see, I can just see this here, so I'm, I, I'll put it in. So this is going to be black. Don't do his white highlight in his eye. Just leave that. And then you can kind of go in, in between it. Because you, you probably not be able to see that what's going on, so I'm going to use a pencil to make sure that I get this really right here because I can see the shine of it and I can see that it will be in the right place all, all around the little highlights as well. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be able to get a lot of detail in there, but. This is very important, getting his eye in the right place. mark in here where the dark area is. This is where it gets really dark in here but as long as you've got your line in and we have I mean that line there is extremely thick with the charcoal pencil. some dark hairs coming in like that. And got some dark marks in there. Yes, yeah, I think now I'm going over the dark marks here. Now Dark streaks coming up here. 